My guest today is Professor Sultan Ismail. He's head of the Biotechnology Division at the New College. Now, so one of the issues that you're kind of very keen on has been food and the whole uh, environment. And these are, these are some of the issues that you've been working on. Let's go into that now. Food, excellent. You know, like uh, many people have come forward with advertising uh, that we have uh, antioxidants in our food, we have probiotics in our food. Big words Big sometimes, words, big you words. Know. Honestly, big words, yes. I tell you. Many people, please, uh, I take this opportunity through this channel yeah. that uh, if you want to think about food, think about our national flag. Why? Why do you say that? Because our national flag, the upper color is saffron color. Yes. So please see to it that every day you include something of that colored vegetable in your food, like carrot, papaya. Anything that's orangey. Orangey, tone. orangey, orangey color. It has carotene and carotene provides you with all the so-called golden rice which they want to provide, which we don't require. Right. Then you have the white and many women suffer from calcium deficiency. So take enough milk and also you have carbohydrates which you can take which is white in color. And then the green, the greens give you all the nutrients, all the required minerals, all the fiber that is required for our body. So all the three colors, take it and you have a chakra with 24 spokes in 24 hours, take sufficient amount of good portable water. And that's our national flag which teaches us and you have a healthy life throughout. It's a, it's a very good way of looking at uh, yeah. food, you know. I mean, you, is this something you're actually propagating? Yeah, we're trying to propagate. I carry my national flag wherever I go to children and tell them what is the importance of our national flag. And, um, you know, like, uh, because many companies are coming forward with so-called foods and with all these packages, fast mm. foods which have uh, things which will not completely provide nutrition. Mm. They, I, I'm not trying to talk anything against any type of food, yeah. but they are not holistic nutrition for a growing child. And we need holistic nutrition. And that my national flag teaches right. me. It's, it's a nice way to explain to a child, isn't it? Salute <laughs> the flag. Absolutely. <laughs> ab absolutely. Very useful as well. Now, in the environment, and the environmental issues are really a big thing, buzzword in this day and age. Yes. Now, what kind of work have you done in that area? Ah, that's good. Thanks to my new college for having given me this freedom to do whatever I want to mm. do with the farmers and other things. Farmers to a large extent are getting disappointed. Really? Why do because, you say that? Uh, uh, now, in case you had um, food in the morning and you had too much of salt in your food, what would be your immediate reaction? Water. Water. That's what is happening to the soils. So we have been putting so much of chemicals, which are salts, into the soils and mm. the soils are demanding more water. But the problem is we look water management separate from soil management. So unless we try to incorporate these things and provide some material which is available to the farmer at his doorstep from his own resources, then we can do it. In my own department, I'm thankful to my own team of uh, staff and students who are working with me. They are coming out with uh, wonderful solutions which we can prepare. A simple example, I tell you. A farmer was growing vegetables and he had a problem with this white grubs. White grubs are some yes. sort of, uh, yeah, which come and eat away the roots and the, there was suffering in cabbage. At that time, one of my students, Jay Prakash, he was working on the field and uh, he came and said uh, that this is a problem. He said, uh, we started working on it and we came out with a small decoction just with, uh, you know, like ginger, garlic, asafoetida, cow's urine and water. Mm. Works marvelous. Today, they are able to control all the day at one, at one fourth the cost of chemical pesticides. At the same time, harmless and good for health. So, there, there is so much of literature available in our country in the form of Briksha Ayurveda. And all these components are available and, uh, and I always, you know, like, through this channel again. The greatest scientist in a village, you know, Jennifer, who is it? In a village, a greatest scientist is a goat. Really? It's I was going to say that you must village headman or no, something. No, the no, the goat, the goat. Okay, right. The goat is such a wonderful animal. Tell me. It eats everything, right? Now, leave that animal. It eats every sort of plant. The plants which a goat does not eat, the species, that variety, they have pest repellent properties in them. That's the reason why the plant is called as Aada Toda. Aada Toda, the, the goat doesn't Don't touch. touch it, yes. Yeah. So, you identify five such varieties, crush them, put them in water, soak them, add little physical cow's urine, you have a broad spectrum pest repellent ready. So, such wisdom is prevailing in our country. There's beautiful uh, systems. But are here. we making use of the wisdom that we have out there that's been there for like centuries? You know that commercialization is taking over to a large extent and... Uh, uh, I think, uh, again, we are trying to revive it because, at least because export market demands on organic, people have started thinking. Right. Now, talking about the export market, your area is waste management. And I know that you've been involved with various universities around yes. the world. And more recently, on, on a continuing basis, Penang at, at Malaysia. Of Sciences, Malaysia. That's right, the University of Sciences. So what is it that you actually go there and do? Because uh, it's wonderful to see that our scientists are actually so much in demand outside of India. Our scientists, yes, 
I am proud of our country because it permits us a broad based knowledge unlike other countries where there is sharp based knowledge. Okay. And I only wish that my fellow men who are scientists come out and work with the people over here. And uh, you know like uh, when, when we go over there and we find that they also have information about it, they have started work. But uh, they did not have this sort of a broad based input where they can manage waste of all sorts of things. And um, I, uh, in this recent visit indeed I had yes. uh, wonderful association with uh, uh, research teams with along with Professor yeah. Hakimi who was coordinating. And uh, we, we tried to work out issues where now University of Sciences Malaysia along with the Center for Global Sustainability which is maintained over there, they are going to manage their entire waste within the campus. I only wish that we follow such examples. Like in uh, one of, uh, long back the government had brought a sort of an order that almost every building should have rainwater harvesting. That's right. That was a very good initiative. It was indeed. Now today what I would request the same government to do is, every big institution should not throw any of their garden waste outside the campus. Whether it's a university, whether it's a government department or whether it's anything. Because handling garden waste is absolutely simple. Unless, you know like, you can give an option for them to handle even canteen waste or hostel waste. Because handling hostel and cooked waste requires a little bit of expertise. In case they fail to do it, it may stink. Whereas garden waste never stinks. Right. Now you're talking about waste management, about government involvement. So have you tried to push it with the government? What have you done then? We have been writing about it. We have not been directly, you know, because I strongly believe in that word management. Mm. Uh, management without the last letter T is management, which is managing others. And without the last letter N is manage me. So if I manage myself, I can manage others. That's I don't right. require an MBA degree to understand that, this, right? Yes, that's true. That is true. Yeah. But then having said that, then do you not believe that it's for people like yourself to make sure that this kind of uh, waste management techniques, that they're very simple what you're talking about, should actually reach everybody. So yes. I would say that the media has a role to play there. Thanks to the media. Uh, the media had done an enormous job. Today, it's popular is because of media. And uh, even waste management, supposing, like what you said, yes. if people feel that I feel bad with the worms, I don't want vermicomposting to be done. What I'm trying to, through your channel, to the homemakers of our city, yes. and, and to the neighborhoods, and to the country, is yes, just buy seven flower pots, empty flower pots. Label them as Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Mm. Sunday's kitchen waste, especially start with vegetables, don't go for non-vegetarian. Right. The clippings, everything, put it on the first pot and put a little bit of soil on it. Monday's on Monday, Tuesday's on Tuesday. So when you come back to the first pot, when you after seven days, by the time all those things have crumpled out. So you're adding a new one. It takes around four to six months for the pots to get filled up. And it's beautiful soil now. And plant your seeds, you have your okra, lady's finger, brinjal or eggplant and uh, tomatoes and sags, and you harvest, buy another seven pots and start your work. And to keep seven pots of different sizes in a balcony is not, it's not going to take too much space. space. So these are simple things which homemakers can do. The thing is, many homemakers are ready to do it, but it has not reached them. And that is where the media plays a role. Right. Uh, it's very interesting that you said this. Now, as a final point to you, is it all right for us to be putting your email ID on our show here today? Because what you're saying makes a lot of sense. What you're saying sounds very simple. So, Professor, can you we do can that? You can put my email ID, my phone number, my okay. uh, websites from where the teachers can take whatever they want to do. Right. Throughout my life, I have worked on it and I'll be happy to continue my services for my country. And we're equally happy that you could join us today. We Thank really you appreciate Thank your you. time, sir. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You. Well, that's all we have time for here in WeConnect. Thank you for joining us because it really is you, our viewers. We need you to be watching. We need you to write in and actually tell us what you think. Do write to us, feedback at ndtv-hindu.com. And so until the next week, you take care. Bye for now.